I suppose all of us have heard or even used the expression, I'd give a year of my life if I could have such and such a thing or if such and such a thing would happen. But what if you suddenly felt the years of your life being taken away from you? It happened to one man, me. The man you'll hear about in the story World Enough and Time on Theater 5. <laughs> Radio. Why should I advertise on radio? There's nothing to look at, no pictures. Listen, you can do things on radio you couldn't possibly do on TV. That'll be the day. All right, watch this. <clears throat> okay, people, and now when I give you the cue, I want the 700-foot mountain of whipped cream to roll into Lake Michigan, which has been drained and filled with hot chocolate. Then the Royal Canadian Air Force will fly overhead towing a 10-ton maraschino cherry, which will be dropped into the whipped cream for the cheering of 25,000 extras. All right, cue them out. Cue the Air Force. Cue the maraschino cherry. Okay, 25,000 cheering extras. Now, you want to try that on television? Well... You see, radio is a very special medium because it stretches the imagination. Doesn't television stretch the imagination? Up to 21 inches, yeah. Uh, whiskey sour on the rocks, sir. Anything else? Well, hello, Mr. Dean. Well, hello, George. You're looking well. I haven't seen you for a while. Stopping at some other airports lately? No, just very busy. Out of the country a lot. Hey, uh, Sid, uh, who's the sharp-looking guy who just walked in? I am. That's Matt Dean. That's a swinger for you. Huh? Rich, funny of dough, but regular. You know how some of these guys with a few bucks are? Well, not Dean, a real prince. Well, I've never seen him in a place before. He seems to know everybody here. What's he do? I don't know exactly. He manufactures airplanes or something. I think he's in a lot of businesses, you know, different things. Boy, he sure is a snappy dresser. I've known him for maybe 20, 25 years. What? Yeah, true. As long as I'm tending bar here, I know. He's always dressed to kill, too. Come on, are you kidding me? That guy ain't old enough for you to know him all them years. He's only about... What, 30 years old? Uh, that's what you think. He looks the same for all the time I know him. Never changes. Never gets old. You know, he, he uh, well, he must be pushing 60 or better. Well, are you kidding me? Now, look, why should I kid you? He's about 60, I'm telling you. I'm 62, and when I started here about 25 years ago, Dean and I were about the same age. You'd never think it now, just looking at the both of us. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I look broken down like what I am, but Dean, he, he flies around, makes money, stays young, I guess. Some guys just got it, and some guys ain't. Well, Sid, how are you, hmm? Hi, Mr. Dean. Haven't seen you in ages. How you been? <laughs> well, how do I look? Great, just great. Well, that's how I feel. Oh, uh, brandy, please. Brandy for Mr. Dean, Jack. Right. Well, you got a new bartender with you, Sid? Yeah, I've been here a couple of months. Hey, uh, Mr. Dean, uh, you want anything uh, with that? Oh, no, 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 thanks. Uh, you're the new man, hmm? Yes, sir, I've been here about three months now. I didn't realize I hadn't been here in so long. I've been traveling on business. Uh, what's your name? Uh, Jack. Well, that's fine, Jack. I'm always around airports. I know every airport, large or small in the world, and I like to know the names of the people on the job. Oh, I uh, guess you do a lot of flying, huh? Well, that's my life. Yes, I'm always flying all the time. That's the secret of my life. Uh, is it true, Mr. Dean? I hope you don't mind my asking, but Sid was saying when you came in that... Well, I... I... <laughs> you mean that Sid said that I've been around longer than he has and I still look like his son? Yeah, yes, sir. That's it exactly. <laughs> now, come on. Is, is that true? Yes, it sure is. I've been flying in and out of this airport for nearly 30 years now. 
You know, you weren't even a twinkle when I started flying. Well, I hope you don't mind my saying so. That, man, that is really something. You, you don't look more than 30 years old. Well, I keep after it. I make sure I don't get caught up in this age race. Oh, Jack, how about another brandy? Huh? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yes, sir. Here you are, Mr. Dean. You mean, I, you got a secret, staying young? Now, that's no secret, really, Jack. It's very simple. Well, how's that, Mr. Dean? Well, you see, Jack, the Earth is revolving counterclockwise at about a thousand miles an hour. Yeah, yeah, a thousand miles an hour right now? Mm Mm-hmm. That may seem hard to believe, but it's true, all right. The Earth we're sitting on right now is traveling about a thousand miles an hour. Isn't that something? Well, anyway, look, as you travel west, if you go fast enough, say uh, a thousand miles an hour, you stay right with the sun. Holy mackerel. Kind of like uh, science fiction, huh? Yeah, kind of like science fiction. <laughs> there was one further step, Jack. Well, what's that? Well, I figured perhaps I could beat the sun by traveling faster than it does. What? You see what I mean? Faster than the sun. I bought an experimental jet which could fly at about 1,200 miles an hour. Now, of course, my plane, an FY-630, can do about 2,100. Wow, that's really moving. Yep. And one morning, I took off at dawn from this very airstrip. When I got to California, I knew that I had time beaten forever. I was a half hour ahead of the dawn. It was two and a half hours after I started, but here it was earlier than when I started. I had lived through and yet saved two and a half hours of my life. Yeah, but um, how do you work it out when you get uh, fogged in or when a plane breaks down or something? Yeah, I've got it down to a science. I have planes at seven different airfields. I can fly to an airport, take off in another plane. You see, my planes are always in top condition. I have pilots working around the clock stationed at different airports. Man, you sure have thought of everything. And it actually works. I mean, uh, well, I mean, here you are, right? <laughs> right. I've been doing it right along for about 30 years. I don't even bother to count anymore. I have beaten time. Oh, I sleep and eat on the plane, land in some city, spend maybe an hour or so for business or fun, and and I'm off again. Always going west. But uh, the most you can stay in any one place is about an hour, huh? Well, actually up to two hours. Then when we take off, we just fly straight through for several hours, and we're all caught up again. Boy, if I didn't see you here before me, I'd say it was incredible, Mr. Dean. (laughs) I know, it does sound incredible. Matter of fact, not too many people believe it, but here I am. Whatever the rule book says about it being impossible, I'm the living proof that it is not only possible, but that I am doing it. Well, I guess you really found the fountain of youth, Mr. Dean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you found Shangri-La. <laughs> right. That's the name of one of my planes, Shangri-La. How about that? Yeah, you're a right boy, Jack. I like that. Well, I'll see you next time I come in. Oh, uh, does this cover my tab? It sure does, Mr. Dean. Thank you, sir. <laughs> right. Uh, so long, Sid. Uh, so long, Mr. Dean. Uh, so long, Jack. Hey, goodbye, Sid. T- take it easy now. All right, now, Stuart. Uh, this contract with Rollington is to be ignored. Let them think that we have absolutely no use for their company. Yes, sir. Uh, then when they come to us wondering why we haven't answered them, we'll be in a better position to dictate our terms. Well, fine, Mr. Dean. You're really convinced that they'll come to us and be concerned about our salary? Oh, yes, yes. I'm sure of it. A million-dollar account, and they're not going to follow up? I don't care how big they are. They'll come around, and then... <laughs> Pardon me, Mr. Dean? Oh, yes, yes. You wanted me to remind you, sir, when it was 145, sir. Oh, thank you. Good man, thanks. All right, gentlemen, I think that's it. Uh, uh, my chauffeur's waiting outside. I've cut my time a little close today so that we'd complete our discussions on this contract. Now I have to get back to the airport. Good day, gentlemen. Good day. All right, Louis. Let's make a beeline to the airport. Yes, sir. Hey, watch out! Hey, did you see that crazy guy in a car ride right into the rear of that limousine? Hey, hey, Mister, you all right? You all? Hey, looks pretty bad. Look at his head. Come on, he's all cut. Help me up. Oh, please. Louis, help me up. Hey, wait a minute. You want to stay little doctor's seat here? Hey, look at his head. Look, I, I haven't the time. Louis, Louis, help me up. you got to get back to the airport. Quickly, Louis. All right, all right. Let me through. Stand back. Stand back. Give him air. 
You, uh, okay, mister? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm perfectly fine, officer. If you just help me into my car, I'll, I'll be even better. I've got to get to the airport. Oh, no, no. Now, wait a minute, mister. Your head. You may have a concussion. No, 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 no. You better stay where you are. Now, let, let look, me help you. Look, officer, I'm sure that there's a doctor at the airport. Yeah. I can take care of it. Here, please just help me into my car, if you will. No, no, here comes the ambulance. Now, you better go to a no. hospital and have this thing no. taken care of. Now, look, officer, I can't go to the hospital. I've got to get to the airport. But, look, I must take off right away. I haven't time for the hospital. I must keep up with my schedule. Now, I must leave. But, Louis, Louis, yes. Louis, tell them. Now, help me. I must get to the plane before it's too late. Look, call Stuart and tell him what's happened. Will you get your hands off me, officer? Now look, I have got to get to that airport right now. Just let go of me. Now, take it easy, mister. You're getting hysterical. Take it now, easy. Take it easy. Look, will you now. just get your hands off me? Now, let go of me. Now, you'll be all right, mister. Look, you'll be officer, in the hospital officer, in a minute. I have got to get to the airport. Now, let me out of here. Let go of me, I tell you. <laughs> Once you get to the hospital, Look, you'll, be, not you'll be okay. Will you let go of me? Let go oh, of me. Hold him, somebody. All right. Delirious. Here you are. Bring this pressure. Will you please let, let me out of here? I've got to get out of here immediately. Don't you understand? You have no right to keep me You'll here. You'll have to be quiet, sir. Yeah. There are other patients here. Look, I don't give a hang who's here. I want to get out of here immediately. Now, I must. Doctor, I demand to see the person in charge of this hospital. Well, now, if you... Hello? Yes, he's here. It's for you, Mr. Dean. Don't get upset and don't talk too long. Hello. Hello, Stuart. I'm glad you got my message. Now, listen, they're holding me here at the emergency hospital. I was knocked down by a car as I was leaving the restaurant. No, 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 no. There's nothing more than a bump on the head. Well, Stuart, I have got to get out of here. You know how important it is to me. Well, come on down here and sign me out immediately. Well, all right, then call my lawyer and tell him to get on this and get me out of here, but quickly. Now, look, Stuart, I don't care if it's habeas corpus, corpus delicti, or whatever it is. I don't care what it costs, either. Then get 20 men if you must. And call Jess Waters down to the mayor's office, right? And call Victor at police headquarters. I want out of here right now, do you understand? Or I can hurry, hurry. Orderly, that fellow over there, keep your eye on him. Right. He may have a concussion. He's reacting yes. strangely. If yes. To file and call me. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Now, get the mayor himself if you must. I've got to get out of here right away. I am desperate. Oh, Orderly. Sir. Orderly, come here a minute, will you? Yes, sir. Uh, Orderly, listen to me. I am Martin Dean. Now, perhaps you've heard of me. I own Dean Industries. Now, uh, listen to me. I know what I'm saying might sound absurd, but it is true. Now, you might have read about me in Newstime magazine. I fly from east to west faster than the sun. Now, yes, sir, now just I a minute, don't... just a minute. I don't have time to explain it all, but I must leave. I must get on my plane. Now, time is precious to me. Do you understand? I have found a way to stay young, and I want to be young. Look. I am not young, despite my appearance. I have to fight to stay this way. Do you understand what I am saying? I am fighting for time, time to live, time to, Sir, to be I alive. Can't... Will you listen to me? Now, please, please, just try and understand. Help me. I must leave by 2.45. Now, now, look, look. Just look at that clock. It is now 2.15. Where's the phone? Where's my lawyer? I, I must leave. I must get out of here. Don't you understand? I'll start to age if I don't. The doctor. Doctor, come here. Doctor. Yes. Doctor, I am Martin Dean, Doctor. Martin Dean. The man in Newstime magazine. Now, you've got to get me out of here, Doctor. Now, I'll make it well worth this. your while, Doctor. I'll give you $1,000, $10,000. Oh, just get me out of here. I have beaten time for 30 years. If it catches me now... Don't you understand? I have got to get out of here. Doctor, where's Stuart? Where is my lawyer? Where is Stuart? I've got to take off by 2.45. I've got to get away. I'll never be able to make up the time if I don't... Stuart! Stuart, Stuart, come here. Here I am. 
Quickly. Stuart, get me out of here. Yes, Mr. Dean, I rushed right over as fast as I could. Now, now, look, Stuart, just tell them who I am. Pay them anything they want. Just get me out of here. Right away, Mr. Dean. Just be calm, Mr. Dean. Be calm? How can I be calm when these fools have kept me here 45 minutes already? Get going, man. Get going. I have uh, got to get out of here. Uh, look, I have... uh, uh, right away, Mr. Dean. Right away. Doctor. Yeah. Doctor, my name is Roger Stewart. I'm executive vice president of Dean Industries. Mr. Stewart, is this fellow really Martin Dean? Certainly. Now, I don't know what happened, but I've got to get him out of here immediately. Well, what's all this nonsense about beating time and time catching up and all that? Oh, I admit it sounds incredible, but this man has seemingly beaten time. At least he's not grown old in 30 years. What? Mr. Dean is 62 years old. 62? Well, I haven't given him a thorough physical, but from what I've seen, Mr. Dean has the constitution of a 30-year-old man. Doctor, here are his papers, identifications, passports. He is actually 62, you see. Oh, it's incredible. Just incredible. How does he do it? Well, Doctor, we have no time to discuss it now. Now, I must get him out of here immediately, or... Don't you understand? Time will start catching up to him. Oh, not you, too. That's what he's babbling about. Stuart. Stuart. What's going on here, man? Um, uh, Stuart, Stuart, are we going to get out of here now, or aren't we? I can't stay here any longer. Now get me out of here and quickly. All right, All right. Be calm. Be calm. Be calm. Please, please, Mr. Dean. We'll be ready in a second. Have you gone that, man? How can I be calm? Look at that clock on the wall. Now, get me out of here right now. I demand it right now. Quick. Mr. Dean, I am making the arrangements, sir. Now, please, just just, just another moment. I don't have another moment. Do you understand? I want action doctor, now. Doctor, please, can Mr. Dean be released? Well, look, it is, it is most urgent. I, I, I assure I you. I am only keeping Mr. Dean here to protect him from any residual doctor, effects of apparent shock. Look, I, I will take the responsibility. Doctor, I have a car outside. I I have a doctor waiting for him at the airport. Don't you understand? All right, Mr. Stewart. If you want to take him out of the hospital now, I'll release him. Good. Well, you'll have to sign some papers. A nurse, uh, would you please get me a relief? A release? A release? Are you crazy, doctor? Do you take me for a fool, doctor? Now, look. Now, listen to me. Here you're told I have to take off from the airport in 15 minutes. 15 minutes, doctor. 15 I'll never be able to make it, even if we walk out this instant. Do you understand? And do you want me to sign papers, Doctor? Papers? Just a what formality. papers? This is my life that's slipping past. It's time. Time. Look at the time, you fool. Look at that time. It's too late. You've done it. Now, Mr. You've, it. You've got too late. It's too late, I tell you. I ought to kill you. Oh, no, wait, 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 Oh, <sighs> 
I imagine you can see for yourself. Well, Mr. Dean has had a psychic breakdown. I think it's been induced by shock and fright. What are you going to do? I'm going to have him hospitalized. It may be at least six months before he can leave. Six months? Well, he'll never stand for that. I'm afraid he'll have to. He doesn't have any choice. I can't release a maniac into the street. Mr. Dean, you can't leave right now. No. I've got to leave. I've got to leave. Yes. I'll kill you. I'll kill you all. You're jealous. You're just jealous of me. Uh, You're robbing me of my own. Dean, come no. Uh, no. Orderly. No. Yes, sir. Take him to the security. You're robbing me. Yes, sir. Right away. Let go. Let me go with him, doctor. Maybe I can calm him. No, he wouldn't recognize you. His mind is snapped, poor fellow. The idea of growing old was too much for him. I doubt if he'll ever recover from his shock. Probably he'll never know who he is or where he is. Much less how old he is. And Time, written by John Nicholas Ianuzzi and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Donald Buca, George Petrie, George Baxter, Jackie Grimes, and Frank Thomas. Audio engineer, Neil Pulse. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlostopsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. <laughs> Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York.